Hey guys, today we are in a neon yellow sweatshirt because it is what it is. Also, if in any video in the next couple days you see me with my engagement ring on my middle finger, it's because it is needing to be resized and it kind of falls off when it's on my ring finger, so it's fine. We're gonna get it done. Also, if you're like, engagement ring? What? Check out my vlog, cause mama got engaged and she got a sick ass ring and if you want pictures, it is on my Instagram and thank you so much for all of the congratulations messages on Instagram, on the vlog. I mean, I am fucking right there with you guys where we have all grown up together and it is always cool to get those messages being like, I watched you when I was 13 and this video helped me and now we're growing up together and like legitimately we are and it's very cool. But getting into the video, if you haven't seen me before, I do on this channel vlogs and I talk about horror movies and movies that I've watched and I give my own little just random watcher reviews. Okay, now that I am not sweating, let's get into everything that I watched in September, which isn't a ton because it was my birthday month and we've been binging Dexter for it to come back on November 7th. Okay, so the first movie that I watched in September was The Core. I just honestly, at the beginning of every month, I go through Netflix and I see if there's any movies that I really wanna see, add them to my list and I try to get through as many as possible. And currently my list is heavily outweighing the movies that I've watched. So I really need like a day or two where I just black hole and watch a bunch of movies because that's a good use of my time. So The Core was a 2003 movie that's basically just like the Earth's inner core stops rotating and people figure out why and they figure out how to start it up again. And I like movies like this where it's very high stakes. I rated it a three and a half and I think it holds steady there. It was very entertaining. The graphics were embarrassing to watch. Not even necessarily good for the time, really, but it was a very entertaining movie and I liked the storyline. Although I will say it was very long. Could have been like cut down by 30 minutes, for sure. And then I did Escape Room Tournament of Champions. I rated this three stars. I gotta say, I liked this better than the first one just because the rooms to me were more interesting and I understand obviously in the first movie you're figuring out what's going on with the other contestants, but I liked that in this one, everyone just knew what was happening right away and everyone was working together to figure stuff out and there was less of the whole arguing like, no, like we just, we won't play their game and like, oh, we have to, to survive. So it was just kind of like motor through it and get it done. The storyline was fine, but that's not why I watch movies like this. I watch movies like this to see cool traps, cool rooms. I watched Songbird, which came out in 2020, which features Archie from Riverdale. During a pandemic lockdown, Nico, a young man with rare immunity, must overcome marital law, murderous vigilantes, and powerful families to reunite with his love, Sarah. I, every time I have looked at my letterbox list for September, I have to go specifically to this movie to read the description because I do not remember what the fuck it was about. I rated this one star. It was just so boring. It was so boring. Like I didn't care about any of the characters. The world building was just meh. It was a pandemic movie. Like it tried to be contagion and it simply was not. Yeah, it doesn't seem like many other people like this either. It's got a 1.7 rating and ooh, doesn't seem like a lot of people enjoy it. Oh, my mom and I went to see Candyman in theaters, which that is the first time either of us had been back in the theaters for like two years. Otherwise it's been streaming or Netflix stuff. I rated this three and a half stars. For a horror movie, the imagery was really interesting to look at and I liked some of the animation styles that they told stories through. The actual scares weren't there. Um, not even just in terms of like jump scares, but just like, feeling super tense. Like there wasn't a lot of that, just like horror movie fear feeling. The story was so good. I was interested the entire time. And sometimes I feel like when I go to movies, because I'm so accustomed to just being at home and like being on my phone or like snacking or like whatever, just multitasking while I'm watching something. It's a big testament to me being in a theater where obviously like being on your phone is a social faux pas. So just staring at the screen and eating popcorn is enough to like entertain me. And this was. Okay. I feel like I might get a lot of flack for this one because this seems to be a fan favorite movie. Um, Hellraiser, 1987. So, okay. 
An unfaithful wife encounters the zombie of her dead lover while demonic Cenobites are pursuing him after he escaped their sadomasochistic underworld. People like this movie. It's got like a 3.5. And I don't know if I didn't like it because it wasn't something that I grew up with and there's not that nostalgia. I don't know if it's because, you know, it was a 1987 movie and the graphics were just hard, but also storytelling was different back then versus like kind of more modern horror movies. And I just, I didn't like it. <laughs> it's just like, I understand the imagery was cool. The monsters were cool. It took so long to get going. And then it's like nothing happened. And then it's the last 20 minutes of the movie and finally something's happening. And it's just like, it's a cool concept. And I like the idea of Hellraiser and all of those things. But I just feel like it would have been a cooler movie if she was brought to the underworld and she had to go through these tests or, you know, it's her kind of like trying to escape and like they're actually following her and she has to like go through and like outsmart them. Like, it's just, I didn't like it. <laughs> the Last Exorcism was a 2010 movie. So this movie was about a reverend who had performed a lot of exorcisms and he came to a point where he no longer believes in the exorcisms and the power of it and he wants to expose it. So he goes and takes on a case which makes him question if exorcism could be real, if demons exist, and it kind of reunites his passion for I mean, exorcism and his relationship with the Lord. Again, a little too long. I rated it a three. I think it's a good exorcism movie though. I think the story was interesting because there are definitely points in this movie where you're really like, so is it all a sham or is she actually possessed or is she not? And there's a lot of times where it tricks you out to the point where you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And then it like kind of comes back at you and you're like, oh, okay. For me, it's not a movie that I would like put on constantly and rewatch. But if somebody was like, hey, we should watch this. I'd be like, yeah, it was good. It was entertaining and it wasn't super scary. I would say a pretty like beginner friendly horror movie. And then the last movie that I watched because yeah, we did not have many was The Ruins. So this movie came out in 2008, directed by Carter Smith. I rated it three stars. And I don't know why I constantly got this movie confused with another movie. I always saw it on Netflix and thought that it was about like people going into the forest and then being chased by this like cannibalistic tribe. But it is definitely not that movie. This is the movie where a bunch of Americans on vacation go to Mexico, they meet somebody at their resort, and he takes them to this ruin that his brother was studying, and then they kind of get trapped there. The thing that I liked about this is that the relationships between the friends seemed pretty genuine. Like, I believe that these characters are flawed in this way. I believe that there are these insecurities in this way. I also like that it wasn't just every single character freaking the fuck out and people are trying to look at this rationally. At a certain point, you find out something that could probably get them out of the situation and they don't do anything about it. Like, so quick spoiler here, if you take part of the ruin and throw it at the people that are keeping them on this period, period, pyramid, then they like attack each other because they believe if the ruins touch them, they're infected with its like infecting properties. Why would you not just as a group of you grab a bunch of these vines and throw it at the people keeping you on the ruin and get the fuck out of there. So those are all of the movies that I watched in September. I am currently on track to watch a lot more movies in October, even though we are still very much binging Dexter because like I said, it comes back November 7th and I'm very excited and I will be doing a whole review of the new series. I might just wait until it's all out and binge the entire thing or I might do episode by episode recaps. We will see because Dexter was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows when it was on TV. I loved it. Um, still questionable about season eight. I only ever watched it one time because that was the only, <laughs> it's all I could muster, but we're gonna be re-examining it like 10 years later and we'll see how it is. But let me know what you guys watched this month and I will see you very soon. Bye.